the Christmas season with a new series to introduce to you guys. And before I dive into explaining what we'll be we will be talking about over the next few weeks, I wanted to introduce myself again. My name is Katie. I'm the high school youth director at Eagle River Community Covenant Church. And I grew up in Minnesota and moved here to Palmer, but I've been loving living in Alaska. So, over the next few weeks, we'll be sharing a few stories from the life of Jesus that teach us why it is transformative to live in personal relationship with Him. There is something so special about being fully known and still fully loved. And I don't know if you resonate with this, but personally, I sometimes live in fear of people knowing me too well. The knowledge that people have of who I am and the vulnerability in sharing sometimes seems to have consequences. People might make fun of my story, they might not like who I am, they might judge my mistakes or my past, but our loving Savior stepped into our stories when they were still messy, broken, and ugly. He knew the extent of our sin and he still chose to die for us and love us fully. And that is a precious relationship that is so different than any relationship we will find on this earth. So this is the relationship that we will be diving into over the next few weeks. Our prayer is that after each week, you would come to know Jesus a little bit better and become more excited about a life devoted to him. Throughout the next few weeks, a psalm that I would love for you guys to reflect on is Psalm 139. And this psalm is all about how deeply our Father in heaven knows us. And it's a perfect psalm for us over the next few weeks as we learn what it means and how significant it is to have a personal relationship with Christ and with our Heavenly Father. So here are a few of my favorite verses from this psalm, starting in verse 13. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. All right, I'll hand it off to my friend Sam and he'll give us the message for the week. See you guys later. Hey. Thanks, Katie, for that introduction. Like she said, my name is Sam, and uh, you know what? If you guys forget that, forget my name, no worries, whatever. Like, I I have a really hard time remembering names myself. Um, <laughs> funny story about forgetting names, uh, or, you know, getting names wrong. Um, my brother and I, we were uh, ordering st some Starbucks, and, uh, you know, they ask for your name. And my brother's name is Benjamin, so he tells them, oh, my name is Benjamin. They said, okay, you know, they wrote it on the cup. And when his drink was ready, they called out Benjamin and <laughs> totally, totally spelled his name wrong. Which is interesting because Benjamin, I mean, maybe there's someone out there watching this video right now whose name is Benjamin, in which case I apologize, but I've never heard of that name. It's not a name to my knowledge. Um, but anyways, it was really funny. We had a great laugh about that. And uh, on, on the other side of that same coin though, sometimes like forgetting someone's name can be really embarrassing or someone uh, who forgets your name, maybe that you've known for a long time, uh, that can be really hurtful. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. Why is that? I think it's because knowing someone's name, it, it brings some sort of a connection. You know, it's the first step to really getting personal with someone. Um, and uh, that's that's what we're gonna do here these or in these coming weeks is get personal with each other, um, with ourselves, and and mostly with God. Uh, so I just want to prepare you guys for that. Um, and I guess I want you guys to know that God knows your name um, and much much more about you. There's a verse that I want to read to you guys, found in Luke chapter 12. Verse 7, it reads, <clears throat> excuse me, it reads like this. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. <clears throat> hmm. 
the very hairs of your head are all numbered. <clears throat> I guess I read that verse to you guys to let you know that God knows everything about you. He knows your favorite color. He knows your middle name. He knows where you want to live when you grow up. He knows what you want to be when you grow up. He knows about your dreams and hopes. And he knows about your fears. Um, he, he knows you better than anyone else, better than you even know yourself. Um, yeah. And <clears throat> that's kind of, kind of intimidating, you know, for some, like, I mean, for me as a kid, uh, I was, I would kind of get stuck on that, you know, like, man, but, but why does he want to know me? Like, I feel like for a God, well, this is what I would kind of wrestle with as a kid is like, if, if God, you know, created all the stars and all the galaxies and the mountains and the oceans and, you know, all the creatures in there, why would, like, like, how could he have time to know me, to want to know me? And uh, I want, I want you guys to know that, first of all, it's, if, if you're experiencing those sort of questions in your head right now, or you have in the past, um, that's totally reasonable. Questions like, well, and, and maybe that's coming from uh, you feeling like God doesn't hear your prayers because you don't hear him back. You don't hear his responses. Um, or maybe uh, you feel that way because you don't really know God. You know, Christianity is maybe new to you. Or maybe you don't really want to know God. Maybe you're in that place. Um, or maybe in the past, Christians have said or done things to harm you and and you've kind of put up walls in your life to to keep keep harm out um, and maybe you're asking these types of questions because you feel like god is just too big there's i mean you know he's just too big for you to uh want to be in your life um, and like i said these are all reasonable questions these are all questions uh to some degree that i've i've asked myself and wrestled with in the past um, and I want you guys to know that God cares for you and he knows you and not only does he know you not only does he I mean God isn't some some weirdo up in heaven counting everybody's hairs you know that's that's not what he keeps track of uh, he he knows your name and he knows who you are today and who you'll be tomorrow um, and uh, <clears throat> Yeah, he, he has your back. He is on your team. So, and <clears throat> I want to kind of go back to that example of forgetting someone's name or, you know, getting it wrong or whatever. Um, that's something I've done <laughs> so much. If, I mean, if you know me, I've probably forgotten your name at some point. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, uh, and one thing I've done in the past and even sometimes today to try and get over that is I, I fake it. I totally pretend. I'm like, yo, what's up, dude? Like, you know, or I'll say, hey, my guy, or I'll, I'll use some other word like that to, to, to get around having to use their name. Um, and I want you guys to know that uh, Jesus and God don't do that because they know your name. They don't need to do that. Um, let me give you guys an example from the Bible. There was a man named Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, to give you guys a picture of who this guy was, he was a short dude. He was a Jewish guy, right? <clears throat> and this was back in Jesus' time. So Zacchaeus was what you might call a tax collector. Mmm, yeah, it's kind of rough. Who likes paying taxes? Not me. But <clears throat> this is what Zacchaeus did. He would, he would collect taxes for the Roman Empire. Now, just a quick snippet of how things used to work back then. Um, the Roman Empire controlled a lot of the world. <clears throat> they controlled most of Europe, uh, parts of Asia Minor, and part of Northern Africa. That sounded weird. Northern Africa, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so they had, they were the superpower of their time. And like any government, they would collect taxes from the people in exchange for keeping them safe from foreign enemies and whatever else, you know, there were some, like if you were a citizen, there were certain benefits, but that's, well, that, that's not what we're talking about right now. Um, 
instead of sending out tax collectors from Rome, what they would do is they would send Roman soldiers out to all the different territories that Rome owned, and they would hire tax collectors that were of the people. So, uh, like I said before, Zacchaeus was a Jew, and other Jews saw tax collectors as traitors. You know, it's uh, it's kind of like being a spy in some weird way, uh, but a public spy, and you're taking money from your people and giving it to the big guy. <clears throat> and if if it were fair, you know, if, if, if all the tax collectors had only taken what they needed to take, uh, things would be different. But that's really not how it worked back then. People who were tax collectors would take way more than they needed to, and they would keep all that extra for themselves. So they would really rip off their own people, man. Uh, so that's that's how they sort of got that bad reputation. And Zacchaeus was even worse than that because he was the boss of all the tax collectors. He was the chief tax collector. You know, he was he was probably teaching these guys how to do these strategies and how to rip people off. So <clears throat> that's the type of guy Zacchaeus was. And in this town, um, I I'd, I'd be willing to guess that uh, the Jewish people didn't even care to know his name. You know, they really didn't care to spend any time with him. They they avoided him in the market. Uh, you know, and Jesus did not do that. Jesus had a very different approach. So, let me paint you guys a picture. Jesus is walking through this town, right? And Zacchaeus hears, like, oh man, Jesus is in town. Whoa, that's crazy. And uh, at this point, Jesus was getting pretty famous, um, pretty well known for working miracles and sticking it to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. <clears throat> and uh, Zacchaeus was like, I want to see this guy, you know? But as a short dude, uh, he, he couldn't see over the crowd, so he runs up ahead and climbs up a tree. And he's sitting on the tree, and he's waiting for Jesus to come by. And, uh, man, let's, let's read it, actually. It's in uh, Luke chapter 19, I think. Verses five and six. Yeah, here we go. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Wow. Imagine that. That's, that's crazy. Uh, and let me tell you why I think that's crazy. It's because Jesus... He didn't say, hey, you, up in the tree, you know. He didn't say, hey, little guy, you know. He, he called him by name. I guarantee you Zacchaeus was sitting up there, you know, in his little perch, watching Jesus like, whoa, man, that's Jesus. <laughs> Must be him. And then he saw Jesus look up, make eye contact, you know. And he said, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was probably like, I bet his eyes got real big. He was like, whoa. He just called me by my name. He said, I'm eating at your house tonight. He's like, what? He hopped down and, yeah, took him over. They had a, they had a dinner that night. <clears throat> and, uh, well, there were a lot of people in the crowd that were following Jesus that weren't happy. In fact, that very next verse, it says, uh, all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Man. Man. It's quite the situation. And you know what? Uh, you know what's crazy is they were all sinners in that crowd. Everybody was. Um, and and Jesus, Jesus must have done that to show them that no sin is too big. You know? No sin is, is too big for him to deal with, to to go through, to push through, to forgive in order to get personal, you know? So, so they dine at his house and uh, yeah. Zacchaeus later on, spoiler alert, he, he ended up giving back a bunch of money to people that he had cheated and stolen from, um, all because Jesus got personal with him, you know? If Jesus had ignored him, if Jesus had totally just uh, walked away, walked past him, or made fun of him, 
Imagine seeing a little short dude chilling in a tree. It'd be pretty easy to make fun of him, <laughs> you know? But uh, it's not what Jesus did. And because of that, Zacchaeus changed his ways. So that's, that's the effects of... Well, that's one example of the effects of getting personal with someone, you know? Jesus, like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, Jesus knows your name. And uh, no matter how you view Christians, if you are a Christian, if you have friends that are Christians, or if, you, if you're not sure about all that, you know, if you don't really know about God, uh, I want you to know that, that Jesus, gets person, or Jesus gets personal with you because Jesus knows your name. That's why it's personal. Um, and yeah, I want you guys to think about how you can pass that on. You know, how, how you can get personal, you know, uh, with, with other people and maybe, maybe brighten up their day, uh, show them love, allow God to work through you, you know, and, uh, number one, it's super easy, three steps, three steps I'm going to tell you guys about today. Number one, learn their name. Whoever it is you're dealing with, whoever it is you're getting personal with, if you don't know their name yet, learn their name. Number one. Number two, learn how to pronounce their name. You know, there's nothing, I mean, the next thing, <laughs> just like my brother, uh, they got the name almost right, but totally spelled it wrong, totally pronounced it wrong. Um, so that's important to pronounce it correctly and make them feel, uh, feel valued and loved. And number three, the last step here, use their names when you see them when you see this person in public uh it's important to use their name get get personal with them you know <clears throat> and it it might seem super simple it might man you might be saying sam that's way too easy man man you gotta step it up like like that's that's baby stuff right there but let me tell you what you're right that is pretty simple and that's why it's so important you know if you can't get personal with someone on a on a simple level you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting personal on a deep more meaningful level hey thanks Sam it is so so good to have a God who knows us one of the hardest things to do in life is to be known to be well and truly known um, but it is a risk uh, worth taking it's a risk worth taking to be known uh, we heard about Zacchaeus you know someone unliked someone unloved who Jesus took the time to know and it changed everything um, so here's your challenge your challenge for this week comes in two parts the first one is to Start allowing yourself to be known by someone. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's a, a friend. Maybe it's um, a cousin. Maybe it's somebody. Uh, maybe it's somebody new. But uh, start allowing yourself to be known. Start feeling out the waters. What's it like to be known? And the second challenge is very similar, and it's to begin to know someone else. To begin to know um, another person. Think outside yourself a little bit. Um, and as we dive in to this series, um, we know that we want to get a little bit personal. We want to be known and we want to know others. Because we look to a God who knows us. Who knows us inside and out. Knows every hair on our head. Uh, and we're glad, so glad, uh, that you're coming along for this journey.